morning, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 120, we're taking a look at every indie game hitting the Nintendo Switch through July 18th. After that, we'll check out some of the best eShop deals this week and help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. If you like our weekly indie rundowns, toss us a like and subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, and stop by the YouTube channel on Thursday for our Nindies at Night stream. All right, this is where we check out the neglected Nindies that Shadow dropped since the last episode. But first, last week, the game lineup was so bad, I decided to cancel the episode. And you all did not like that. Because all of you, and I mean all of you, were like, we want the snarky jabs, be angry, wah! So stay tuned, because we'll get to that shortly. In the meantime, let's kick off episode 120 of Nindy Nation by taking a look at the four notable Nindies that hit the eShop since episode 119. We start with a pleasant surprise that was shadow dropped out of nowhere by Atui, the makers of Mutant Muds, Zeo Drifter, and other charming indies. This time, they're taking the concept of Picross and blending it with Brain Age in a relaxing puzzle collection they call Pictui. We here at the Nindy Nation Department of Puns give this title our stamp of approval, and think this Sudoku meets Minesweeper with Charm Despair looks like a great time. It's a good option for your puzzle fix that comes published by Limited Run Games for $9.99. Now, I can't tell if Merrily Parrily is any good, but it looks ridiculous and I kinda wanna try it. Published by Top Hat Studios, you basically guide a dude with the worst luck ever through a series of crises, like quenching his thirst, to being chased by bees, to catching on fire, and you just see how long you can survive. Maybe we'll add this to Nindies at Night, since it's only four bucks. What do you think? Speaking of games with a silly premise, a big surprise for me last week, and a game that made its way onto Nindies at Night just in the nick of time, was Songs for a Hero Definitive Edition by Dumativa. It's a very traditional side-scrolling platformer, think Monster Boy or Wonder Boy. Very simple. Thing is, the whole game is a musical, and some jackass narrates everything you do in terribly cheesy song. <laughs> it's great. I don't know that there's enough here to entertain you for hours on end, but go check out our stream, and if you have grade school kids, check this one out. It's 15 bucks, but I'd be willing to bet that your kids would get a few evenings of entertainment out of it, and if you're like me, <laughs> that is priceless. And then we got an action exploration platformer that moves much quicker and employs that three-color, one-bit art style as Lateralis released Dog World for $14.99. Explore a big world with fast, tight combat in an experience that seems to be on the shorter end and has reviewed pretty well since releasing on PC a few months back. I'll keep my eye out for this one. Maybe we can play it on Nindies at Night, because I like what I see, I'm just not sure about that price tag. As these are the notable Nindies, they're all looking pretty good. Comment below if you're picking any of them up. Now, <sighs> hey, if this is your first time listening, or even, like, your fifth, look at the timestamp on screen right now and just skip this next part. I need to have a chat with the heathens of Nindy Nation. Okay, I told you last week that I didn't want a 25-minute show of snark and negativity. You said you wanted something full of snark and negativity. You said, Jeff, we know more about how to run the show than you do, Jeff, so just make the show, Jeff, because we know what we want, Jeff. Just tell us about the bad games, Jeff. Well, fine! Dolores Entertainment was like, Hey, Scott Pilgrim is cool. How can we copy it but make it terrible? And then the other guy was like, Let's make it a match three puzzle game. And out came Indigo 7 Quest for Love. Oh, reverse memories. Here's a treat. Tell me if you've heard this f***ing Shakespeare before. Teenage boy lost his memories. Can you believe it? And guess what? He falls in love with a child. Go f*** yourself, Navila Software. The porno boys at Gamazumi made Beauty Bounce. <laughs> Wanna take a guess at what the f*** that is? 
The Sisters, Party of the Year. Takes me back to a simpler time when shovelware was in the physical bargain bin. You know, when it was easier to ignore. Rubik's Rollers, the easiest way to push a Rubik's Cube across the floor if you don't have a Rubik's Cube or a f***ing floor. My Little Fruit Juice Booth would only be a decent game if you could put cyanide in the juice and give this bullsh** right back to Benjamin Kistler. Crash Drive 3 is 20 bucks. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey, you want some fruit juice? Super Archer is Angry Birds for... Ah! Colossus Mission is great if the eShop is where you turn in your 7th grade programming homework. Metro Simulator is all the fun of driving a bus on rails. There's Kids Farm Puzzle if starving your children isn't teaching them the lesson. Shopping Mall Parking Lot. That's right, Shopping Mall Parking Lot. That's the game. It's by Pixel Mob, which I think is just boom bit. <laughs> Mario! Shopping Mall Parking Lot. And it's all thanks to you. Thank you, Mario. And then we've got the rock block for dickheads featuring Mario, like Pixar's Boom Bit, Benjamin Kistler, and Moto Rider Go, Highway Traffic, Car Driving Simulator, Pigeon Fight, because of course, Marbles Rush, Connect Bricks, Fantasy Cards, Connect the Dots, all get a rousing score of... <laughs> And that's pretty much what you missed last week. These are the 17 new releases hitting the eShop through July 18th. We've only got one title kicking off the week on Monday, July 12th, but it's definitely something different. Fates of Ort is a very retro, early PC-style isometric RPG by 8-Bit Skull. And I've got a code for it if you want to check it out on Indies at Night. You explore towns, battle in dungeons, and the two shticks are that time stands still when you do, and that using magic costs you your life. So there's a lot of thinking and planning involved. It seems like it could be pretty cool, and while there aren't many reviews out there yet, the people that have played it seem to really enjoy it. It releases for $14.99, and if you want to see more, let me know in the comments. Speaking of games I got a code for that showed up in my inbox unannounced, Induction is a puzzle game that reminds me of the M.C. Escher-style puzzle games like Echo Chrome over on PlayStation, but this one is all about time travel and paradoxes. It's definitely the kind of stuff that'll break your brain, but it also looks cool, and you gotta admire that clean, bold art style. It's developed and released by Brian Gale, a solo developer, and hits the Switch on Wednesday the 14th, on sale for $6.29. And then, believe it or not, we're already at the big Thursday drop. But before that, <laughs> you want to talk about things that can make that acidic, barfy, reflex stuff come up in your throat? Let's see, you've got really, really spicy Italian sauce, at least for me. A uh, pregnancy could cause it, it could actually be a hernia, or it could be games by PixArts, which is itself a hernia on the eShop. Treat yourself to the digestive bile that is egg up or 3D air hockey. They're both guaranteed to make you wish you had a hiatal hernia. Hey citizens, are there any good pool or billiards games on the Switch? Is there one in Clubhouse Games? Let me know. Revulo Games releases classic pool, but I can already tell this ain't what we're looking for. It does have a bone cue, though. And then Ultimate Games received a rating from the ESRB for Junkyard Builder of T for Teen Use of Alcohol. This isn't because you play as an alcoholic who rummages through garbage, but that actually is what you do in the game. No, it's rated T for teen use of alcohol because if you play this game, it will almost certainly drive you to drink. The Big Thursday drop kicks off the week with a good old roguelike Souls-like. Igor Sandman and the fine folks at Digerati bring us Guild of Steel for $14.99, and they are gunning straight for my heart when they say things like, It's inspired by flashback and vagrant story. See, the world is this pixelated cinematic platformer of sorts, like Flashback or Prince of Persia, so forth, but you play as an immortal sellsword exploring this gorgeous dark fantasy world as you learn its secrets and fight off its eldritch horrors. It's got the roguelike mechanics and the RPG elements, but seems to have a static world. I could be wrong, though. 
Either way, I would love to get my hands on this game. Maybe we can check out Guild of Darksteel on Nindies at Night this Thursday. Our battle has just begun. Episode 1 is probably a game I'm going to get less enthusiastic about every time a new episode comes out, but it seems like people are enjoying this one so far. It's a visual novel by Vridge where you play as some dude with amnesia. Wow. Much creative. Many unique. Then you go chase after the big baddie. You meet a bunch of bouncing booby magic girls. There's talking woodland creatures. You get the drift. It's also launching on Thursday with a 10% discount for $8.99. And then the team at Hidden Trap, Newt Industries, Blood Wolf Studios. Jeez, how many people does it take? They release a game that laughs in the face of seizure warnings with a super cool side-scrolling space shooter called Risk System for $9.99. It's supposed to play out like a mech anime and has this system where you do stunts and risky maneuvers to gain upgrades. It sounds like Burnout, but a shmup. And that's a pretty cool pitch. Otherwise, the visuals look awesome, albeit potentially brain-damaging with how vibrant and flashy they are. But I could go for a solid shmup right now, so count this as yet another one that I might be checking out later this week. Another game that looks visually impressive is Macratus, A Mother's Journey, which comes by way of East Asia Soft and Proud Dinosaurs for $11.99. Take visual inspiration from the Ori games, that lush, realistic fantasy but has a small creature look, throw in a parent-saving-child plot from something like Finding Nemo, and make it a platformer with puzzles where you play as a mouse. And that seems to be the formula we've got going on here. I don't see any combat, but the mix of traditional puzzles and platforming challenges seem to deliver a pretty good variety of gameplay. It's certainly one of the more interesting games we've seen from East Asia Soft in a while. I'm into it. And you know what else I'm into? <laughs> I am so into this next game because it looks so bad. Some kind of B-tier TV-like supernatural interactive full motion video uh, thing. It just seems like a great way to kill an evening laughing your ass off. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe follow a husband and wife who tackle six Monster of the Week stories in some kind of X-Files meets Twin Peaks format. It says it's a point-and-click timed hotspot interface, which frankly sounds like a nightmare, but I mean, I wouldn't be playing this to get the best ending. I want to see how everything can go horribly wrong for these people, you know? It's made by Diavecki Studios, who for the longest time made murder mystery games, so I have a feeling they know exactly what they're making here. I'm all for it. It's 1169. I'll get the popcorn, everyone bring some drinks, we'll get drunk in my basement, what do you say? Flynn's Arcade is one of those teams that I never know what to think of, almost more than any other publisher. This week, in partnership with Gone Mad Studio, they release a side-scrolling survival post-apocalyptic adventure called Lambs on the Road, The Beginning, for $2.99. You got your climate change causing a food shortage, causing chaos, and hey, this looks just like The Last of Us, but a side-scroller. It claims to hold your heart in a fist, which doesn't sound pleasant. But the game doesn't look too bad, especially for being a shorter story with a $3 price tag. Before really diving into the next game, I wasn't so sure it belonged on this side of the no-nos. But after seeing Labyrinth City Pierre the Maze Detective in action, it's pretty cool. Adapted by Darjeeling and Pixmane, this game is focused on a children's book series that I've never heard of. The artwork reminds me of a Where's Waldo book, but you control Pierre through essentially gigantic mazes. You solve simple puzzles along the way as you progress through a crime mystery story. If you've got younger kids or there is a Pierre the Maze Detective fan in your household, take a look at this one when it launches on sale for $9.95. The team at John Dusoft say that their new $5 title, Wizard, is inspired by the Binding of Isaac, but without blood and more magic. It's a simple top-down pixelated dungeon crawler that looks more rogue-like than rogue light, so not much by way of permanent upgrades. It might be worth a look when it's a couple bucks cheaper. When Red Colony launched just a few months ago, it was as if the developer Runic Codes said, Okay, Resident Evil, but 2D with flat mobile graphics. And someone was like, It needs more! So they went all in on spine-crushing boob physics. It's definitely not a game for me, but I do know that some people who put the time in found a short, replayable title that was a different take on survival horror. In what seems like a surprisingly fast turnaround, this week, Shin Yudin releases Red Colony 2, which, for all intents and purposes that I can see, 
adds a black chick and dinosaurs. Watch for reviews because if they fixed a few of the common concerns from the first entry, this graphic novel survival horror starring Foxy Cleopatra from Austin Powers 3 could be a fit for you when it releases for $6.99. Giggity giggity. We also see animated cleavage, but with much more of a fantastical twist in what might be the first Switch release from Kynard Lober. Lotus Reverie First Nexus just sounds like anime, doesn't it? It's a visual novel with some time and resource management components that revolve around surviving at the end of the world. It has branching relationship paths like you'd see in a Persona game, and seems to be just a bit more than the average anime visual novel. It also launches on Thursday with a discount for $13.91. And then we round out the big Thursday drop with the port of an older mobile game as Spellbind Studios brings Rogue Wizards to the Switch for $14.99. While I'm a bit cautious with any mobile port, and the game does have a bit of that mobile art style, what you get here is an isometric world inspired by games like Final Fantasy Tactics and Bastion with an admittedly intriguing hook. As a Nindy trifecta, Rogue Wizards is an isometric turn-based strategy RPG with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! And if I can grab a copy, and we have time, we'll take a look at this one as well on Nindies at Night this Thursday. There's a quartet of titles wrapping up the week on Friday, but before that, be sure to watch out for this quartet of nonsense. If you've been waiting with bated breath for more digital jigsaw puzzles, but just needed that extra push of scantily clad high fantasy women, well, Dark Fantasy Jigsaw Puzzle is out this week. Benjamin Kistler stole a couple more D-tier mobile games with Defend Your Kingdom and Word Crush. Who hurt you, Benjamin, and why don't you stop the cycle? And then the biggest mind f- of all for me is this ridiculous escape room dumpster fire from Alignment Sharp, who just keeps f- out sequel after sequel of this thing. Escape from a deserted island, the adventures of Nyanzu and Kumagichi, escape game series. If I buy this game and never play it, do they die on the island? Do they? The first game to release on Friday is... Oh, my goodness, look at you, Rattleaka. Within the Blade is a retro-inspired ninja game by Amethyst Studio that... Yeah, looks like we've got a lot of Ninja Gaiden, but also some Katana Zero and Mark of the Ninja influence here, too. It's side-scrolling ninja goodness that is super violent and looks real promising. We've got a bunch of bosses, lots of action, some stealth, a huge skill tree, a crafting system? Wow. Yeah, Nindies at Night is starting to have some competition. (laughs) It's getting crowded. If it looks good and you want to dive in, Within the Blade launches on Friday for $10.99. Artifacts Mundi's latest point-and-click slash find-the-hidden-object game is Lost Grimoires 3, The Forgotten Well. As usual, it's $14.99 and features artwork that is pulled right off the cover of those trashy romance novels at your local grocery store. But hey, Christopher Bradford says they're decent. Marcine Skierski and Boren Games bring us Squeakers 2 for three bucks. It's a multiplayer game for up to four players where you build towers in a falling block puzzle format while water is filling the screen from the bottom. I swear we've seen this game before. Now, I don't want to go throwing accusations, but this really feels like a re-release or an asset swap or something like that. Anyways, last up this week is Chili Dog Interactive and Huge Pixel who release Restless Night, a super retro twin stick shooter for $4.99. They claim this zombie-themed horde battling title is Made with love and taste. Even your grandfather remembers this feeling and how much fun it actually is. Which tells me whoever wrote this up is much younger than I am. To me, this week's standouts include Guild of Dark Steel, Risk System, and Macratus, but I'm very intrigued by Dark Knights with Poe and Moreau, Rogue Wizards, and Within the Blade, too. What about you? It's a pretty good week, so sound off in the comments with what's going on your wish list. Before we get into the deals, I'll let you in on a little secret. A couple of my favorite games so far in 2021 are going to be on sale this Thursday right alongside a new Nindies We Love video. So if your gaming budget is extra tight this week, you might want to wait until Thursday before picking any of these up. 
These are our picks for 11 of the best eShop deals through at least July 18th. One of my favorites of 2020 is at yet another new lowest price ever, as Fury Unleashed is now 55% off for just $8.99. It's a side-scrolling run-and-gunner set to the theme of a comic book riffing off of 80s action movies, and I absolutely love it. It's fast, it has multiple difficulty options, a boatload of content, and comes complete with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG! Of all the arcade racers on the Switch, my favorite is Horizon Chase Turbo, but Hot Shot Racing is a very close second, and it's currently 66% off for $6.79. Looking like a 90s arcade racer a la Daytona USA, you get big chonky polygons, fun arcade racing action, and an upgrade system that'll help you progress through this delightful homage to classic Sega racing. Another gem from last year is 3000th Duel, which has seen multiple updates and free expansions since releasing in early 2020. It plays most like a Castlevania game with a dark, gothic theme and an addictive but slower combat system that's fleshed out with tons of skill tree progression. 3000th Duel isn't the best in the genre, but it's a big, meaty experience that I enjoyed through and through. And with a 60% discount, $5.99 is a great price for a fun game to get lost in while listening to podcasts. If you want to go even darker and you're looking for a challenge, maybe consider Morbid The Seven Acolytes, an isometric action RPG that's half off for $12.49. Featuring Souls-like combat and progression, you'll hack and slash your way through a twisted horror punk world chock full of Lovecraftian gore. It's one of the higher rated games on today's list and should deliver about eight hours of revolting violent fun. Shifting gears a bit, three different space shooters are on sale that all deserve their own shout out. My favorite of the bunch is Velocity 2X, which blends a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with mini challenges that feel like fast paced Metroid levels. It's really unique, and with the Switch's touchscreen is the best way to experience the game since it originally launched on the Vita. At 75% off, I hope more people check out Velocity 2X while it's $4.99. A much more traditional shmup is the budget title IAI, which already has a demo available on the eShop. This one gives you static stages with ramping difficulty that you'll tackle through grinding out currency to buy upgrades in between levels. It features a hilarious, poorly translated story that made me laugh out loud every time it popped up. IAI provided a solid weekend of fun when I 100%ed it a few months back and is currently 40% off for $5.99. And if it's twin stick shooting on a skinny budget you're after, Space Pioneer is a previously free to play mobile game that I think made the jump to Switch very nicely. You pick short missions from a map screen that have you defending a base, eliminating the enemies, or escorting people across colorful alien infested worlds. The combat feels good, the leveling systems are addictive, and even at 80% off for a buck 99, it felt like a well rounded game that isn't held back by its free to play roots. The Bit Trip games are all back on sale, half off for $2.49 each, and if you've never played any of them, I'd suggest checking out the Auto Runner Bit Trip Runner or the Twin Stick Shooter Bit Trip Fate. And then if you like those and you want some more, my favorite of the bunch is Bit Trip Void, which is a really weird music rhythm game that combines a bunch of Atari style game types. The visuals in this series are really cool, and they also feature some of the best chiptune music you'll find. So if you've ever been on the fence, now is a great time to see what all the buzz is about for this beloved indie series. Finally, a game that has been the talk of our Discord town the last few days is For the King, which is 66% off for $8.49. I've yet to play this one for myself, but I asked the community for their thoughts, and here's what Citizen Alethiel had to say. It feels like playing a pen and paper RPG with video game turn-based combat. The story evolves in real time like it would if you had a game master. You can throw your dice for movement and find dynamic situations that pop up as you explore the terrain. 
I definitely recommend it to anyone who loves a good old tabletop RPG or just wants a slower paced game with a story. So you got your trifectas, some space shooters, a bit of D&D action, and hopefully some of you will check out BitTrip for the first time. If you do, I want to know what you think. Head on down to the comments and let me know what you might be picking up this week. And if you know of any other great deals, feel free to share those too. If you want to chat more about indie games, you can find us on Twitter at Nindie Nation, or even better, come hang out with us on Discord. This Thursday, we'll be checking out a couple of this week's games during Nindies at Night, so stop by the YouTube channel at 10 p.m. Eastern to join us. Also, look out for a new video posting on Thursday because I've been working a ton on it and I'm really excited for you to see it. If you like our weekly indie rundowns, toss us a like because it really helps us grow and subscribe for even more Nindy gaming goodness. Next week, we're starting to get deep into the summer release schedule and there's still a lot of exciting games coming out in July and August. I can't wait to see more from games like Unsighted and Greek Memories of Azur, but that's all for later citizens. We're all done for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 120, and remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.